Hey, we're live on Facebook. Happy Thursday, everyone. We welcome you to another week of Inspired by Free Spirit Fabrics. I'm Sharon Thornton, and we have by Annie with us here this week. So we're really excited to have Annie back to share her bags with us. But before we uh, turn, turn it over to Annie, I would just like to uh, let you know I'm coming here uh, today from Charlotte, North Carolina, and Annie is coming from St. George, Utah. Is that right, Annie? St. Yes. George? Okay. And uh, please tell us where you're from. We always like to know where you're tuning in from. So let us know. We always like to hear that. Give us thumbs ups and hearts if you are tuning in a little bit later or you want to rewatch today. Uh, today's Inspired By with Free Spirit Fabrics. You can uh, come back to our Facebook page. We, it will be on our Instagram page and it will be on our YouTube. And Annie will also be posting this onto her social media platforms as well. So you can also look for all the information there. Um, you can find anything about Free Spirit Fabrics at our freespiritfabrics.com. You can go in there and you can look at all of our fabric collections, the things we have coming up, the projects we've already created for inspiration and programs, et cetera. And for Buy Annie, you can go to buyannie.com and you can see all of their uh, projects and products that they have. And there's a whole bunch in there, Annie. I know you've got a lot, um, which Annie's gonna share a bunch of projects that she's made uh, this week with us out of Free Spirit Fabrics, of course. And there is a, it's kind of like a trunk show this week. She's got a wide variety and it's going to be exciting to see a lot of the collections that are shipping now or soon to ship to your local quilt shop. So please stay tuned and, uh, you know, look at all these beautiful, exciting things that you can make in the very near future. So Annie, I am going to switch this over to you right now. Oh, and I also wanted to say before I switch over to Annie, sorry, Annie, that was a psych. Um, we uh, will have uh, Free Spirit, Lindsay and Nancy will be on and they will be uh, answering questions. We'll be looking for questions and Annie also has members from her team uh, answering questions on behalf of by Annie. So I just wanted to let you all know that. And at the end, we will have a giveaway. So of course you need to stay tuned. <laughs> all right, so now I'm gonna switch it over to you, Annie. Uh, hold on one second here. I got to, I think I have to unpin myself. Let me see. Every week, Annie, it's it's new. <laughs> I understand. All righty. So I believe that you are now pinned and all of the viewers can see you. So welcome, Annie. We are very, very excited to have you back with us. Uh, we always love to have you. Thank you so much. I love um, working with you and it's always fun to be a guest on your show. We have had so much fun sewing with all these new fabrics and we've got some new patterns to show. So what I thought I would do today is concentrate kind of on the patterns and show you how different they can look made with all of your different fabrics. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about each pattern, uh, but we've got so many to share and we don't want to be here for two days. So right. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about the projects themselves, but I want you to know that for each project that I show um, on our website, we will have other videos that go into an introduction video that shows you all about the um, project and the fabrics that we used, all the different models that we made, lots of different ways to use them. And then we also have a video called A Closer Look that helps you figure out what you need in terms of fabric and other supplies. So make sure you go check those out if you have additional questions that we don't cover today, because we just don't have time to do it all. But um, yeah. I thought I would start by showing you one of our newest patterns. This is a pattern called Tools of the Trade. And we made this one using CAFE's um, new uh, collective um, fabric. And what I love about this bag is we designed it to carry all those oversized items. I know a lot of us are quilters and we haven't probably been going to a lot of classes lately, but pretty soon that's going to start happening. 
And it's the most frustrating thing in the world to be packing up your stuff to go to class and your arms are full with all your project pieces and you've got your sewing machine and you're trying to carry your big ruler and your cutting mat and all of that. And invariably something falls and gets broken. And so we've designed a way that you can carry all those big items and all your other supplies in one bag. And we put really long handles on it so you can carry it cross body and have your hands free to work. So this pattern is called tools of the trade. It comes in two sizes. I'm going to show you the small one to show you the features. And then I'm going to bring up a big one and show you what all will fit in it. But it's got um, a front and a back. We designed this so that the back is cut a little bit shorter than the front, which makes it lean back because we knew that when you get to class, you're not going to have room on your table to put a great big bag. So this can lean against your table, lean against the wall, and you can just lift the flap and access everything that's inside. So you don't even have to open the bag other than the top flap to get in and get things. On the outside, there is a slip pocket where you can put your keys in your phone and a zippered pocket for things that you wanna keep safe and secure. When you zip it open, it's got zippers that go down each side so you can lay it down flat on your table zip it open and you've got lots of dividers and pockets in here so there's a big mesh pocket on the front and then on the back we have what we call a padded divider and so you can put your cutting mat your pressing um, cloth Pressing mat, I guess it's called. I pressing think mat, it yeah. Pressing mat, big rulers, all those things in there. And then on top of that, we put fabric dividers and also mesh dividers. And these are all divided into sections so you can store all your tools and supplies and have them really easy to see and also really easy to access. Then right. when you're done, and we also designed it so that if you don't have enough table space to open this fully, you can just fold this part way over and access all those things. When you're right. done, you just zip it back up, you close the flap and it fastens with magnetic snaps. So it closes really nice. Mm -hmm. And again, we made the handles long enough so that you can wear it cross body and have your hands totally free. Right. So this is the small one. And this bag is really ideal for big um, focus fabrics, things that have big designs on them. So we loved um, making these sets out of K fabrics. Let me show you the large one that we made um, using his fabric too. So you're going to say, wow, that is a big bag, um, but perfect for using these great big fabric um, designs. And I'm going to bring up one that we made with on Maria's bright eyes so I can show you what goes in it. So this one we made using Bright Eyes from Anna Maria Horner. And I want to show you how much you can put in here and how all those big things that you want to carry or you know, just get off the dining room table and put away somewhere nice will fit. So uh, behind the divider, I have my 20 and a half inch ruler which again is impossible to find a bag that that will fit in. I have my great big stripology ruler. I have my 24 by 18 tulip pink cutting mat. And I have one of the big wool pressing mats. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to take this stuff and set it on the floor rather than yeah. try and put it back in there. But, that um, a lot, but yeah. all of those fit behind that padded sleeve. Wow. And because it's not sewn in at the bottom, they can all go all the way down to the bottom of the bag and fit really well. Wow, very nice. And, and I think you've thought of everything. You've even thought, you know, like you said earlier about the a place for your phone and your keys and everything. Yeah, all those things you need to take. Then you've got um, little mesh dividers on top here where you can put smaller rulers, scissors, markers, rotary cutters, and then the fabric dividers that you can divide to put maybe your smaller cutting mats and your smaller rulers. So all of the divisions on here can be totally customized to fit what you want to put in there and what you want to carry. If you want it to use this 
you know, as an artist and put your big sketch pads in here and do paint brushes and things, your earphones, if you like to listen to music while you paint, you may want to change how these divisions are done, but there's lots of flexibility in here. And then again, we've got this great big pocket on this side where you can put your fabric. If you're working on a quilt and you wanna put that in there, even your great big oval quilting hoop, if you do hand quilting, um, mm -hmm. will fit inside. So lots and lots of stuff that you can carry inside here and lots of ways to customize it. Yes, that's awesome. So we, and then we made um, the small one out of Anna Maria's um, bright eyes as well. So that's um, what it looks like in the smaller version. So Annie, can you put that big one up, the one you just set down of bright eyes and bring up the cave one just so that we could see the difference? Sure. So there's Anna Maria's bright eyes. Yeah, I mean, cause that holds a lot. So that's awesome. And I'd like to uh, also mention that the, the CAF one that uh, Annie's showing now, yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Uh, those fabrics shipped to quilt shops back in February, the end of February. And the Bright Eyes is shipping in May to your local quilt shop. So if you're interested in any of those fabrics, just head to your local quilt shop or contact them and ask them when they're going to get it. Right, that's for sure. One other thing that I wanted to mention about this, the large one calls for, I think, two and a half yards of fabric, and you need to quilt pretty much that whole piece, or, yeah, I mean, we cut it into sections to get it, but because we usually get two yard pieces of fabric and have those quilted, what we did is we made a little bit of a modification to the inside, and oh, actually, maybe not on this one. We may have had more fabric. But sometimes you have to change this piece right here. You may, if you had like a two yard piece, you wouldn't have enough to cut this inner divider out mm -hmm. of the same fabric. So sometimes we put a, a totally different fabric in that we use for that. So this bag gives you just so much ability to customize and work with different fabrics. Another thing that I wanted to mention about this bag um, you know, I know what it's like when you go to class and you've got so many different tools and supplies that you want to take and you want to be able to access them. We have another pattern that's called pocket packers. And these are super simple and easy to make. And they come in four different styles. You can do one with just one pocket. You can do one with two pockets. You can do one with three pockets as we did here or one with four pockets. And these fit really well inside wow. That's the, nice. um, right. the tools of the trade. So you right. can put two of them next to each other and have even more um, ways to organize everything that you want to carry. But yet when you're ready to go, instead of carrying five or six different bags, you've got one bag to carry. Right. Exactly. That's, Someone that's asked really the question, do we ever put metal feet on the bottom of the bags to help, help save wear and tear on the fabric and binding? Uh, we did not do that on this one, uh, mostly because we figure it's probably not going to be carried around and sat down a lot, but you certainly could. It would be really easy to do. This is a stabilizer sleeve that's sewn on here. And we put a little piece of um, foam board in here to make it strong and sturdy, but you would just put the feet on your quilted piece and then mm -hmm. that would cover the hardware on the other side. Right. I wanted to show you one more bag I made out of um, made tools of the trade. We used Sue Penn's new fabric. So let me get these out of the way and I'll bring up that one. So again, another totally different look. That's beautiful. Look so how nice that is. This is Sue's fabric that has the great big peacock. So again, we really think that this bag is ideal for um, fabrics that have really big designs on them. And then on the inside, I loved this piece of fabric. It had so much going on. Oh, I know. I love that one too. That whole collection is really beautiful. So really this collection is called Pizzazz, as Annie just said, and this is shipping to shops in the month of March. So there you can see oh on the gosh. inside. So Look how this gorgeous fabric that has that all of gorgeous. these beautiful designs on it. And that yeah. netting looks really pretty over the top of it too. Yeah, we did the uh, blast off blue to um, we when we do this, we always audition our colors. So we lay the mesh on it to see which one works. And this one 
there were so many options that would work good. And we finally decided we want it to go a little darker to kind of blend in with our um, zippers that we had used. So we did the blast off blue on all of that. But you can see here, as I said, we used a different fabric for this inner divider than what we used for the bag, mm -hmm. um, just to make better use of the fabric. And it also is a nice way to showcase another fabric. Right. Who, who doesn't you, like to use every fabric that's out there? Exactly. You know, patch it all together, create fabric, and then. <laughs> and make then here, bag. this is the one that we made also out of that line, the small version. I really loved this print. I love that too. With that the geometric diamonds on it. Yeah, the print is really beautiful. Very nice, Annie. You guys always do such a nice job with all of our fabrics. Well, thank you. We love working with them. And this, um, what was I going to say? My mind just totally, whatever I was going to say, I just lost. Someone asked, is tools of the trade for advanced bag makers? Actually, tools of the trade, we say anybody can make it, beginner um, to advanced. There, It is amazingly easy to make this bag. Uh, you, The zippers that go on the side, we figured out a really simple way to make those go in and you do some binding on the outside. And it's kind of a fun one because when you bind this outside, you do mitered corners at the top and you do curved at the bottom. And our add-on video that we filmed for this project walks you step-by-step step through doing that part of the pattern. Our add-on videos don't go, th go through every single part of the pattern, but we have basic videos that teach you kind of the basic skills that are the same from pattern to pattern. And then our add-on videos focus on the things that are more unique to the particular pattern. So on this one, we cover how to prepare the zipper strips, adding the zipper to the side. We cover how to bind this and we also cover how to do the handles. I don't know if you noticed, but when we put the handles on here, we angled them and we did that for several reasons. It, it, it makes your pocket a little, have a little more usable space so we can make it bigger at the bottom. It mm -hmm. adds some interest to the front and it also makes sure that the, the handles come together closer at the top so it's not falling off your shoulder when you're trying to carry it. Yeah. So we put a tremendous amount of thought into this pattern, lots of prototypes and, um, you know, things back and forth, trying to make it just right. So it really turned out nice. And I remembered what I was going to say. The small bag is a really nice one for carrying a laptop. Even the big laptops fit nicely in there and you can put all your papers and your cords and things. So it'd be a nice bag just to take back and forth um, from home yeah. to work. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's exactly what I should do. You It'll should be too carry. heavy. The that more would be a good bag for you to start with. Yeah, no, that's that's a great suggestion. I love that. So, Annie, we have people. Um, I have a few questions in here. So, what I just wanted to let you know is that we have guests that are viewing from Sweden, uh, Canada, Finland, France, Norway, California, Virginia, Georgia, South Dakota, New Zealand. I don't know if I said that already. Alabama, Ohio. So, we, we have viewers from. Many, many places today, and we have a lot of viewers on. And I think it's uh, close to 350. Wonderful. And yes, and everybody. So there's a question that says, is there a loop to hang, um, hang the pocket pack up for storage of rulers? Yes, the pocket packers. So here's a couple that I didn't put in the bag. So the pocket packers again have four different styles. So this is the one that has one pocket and two pockets and then they all have a mesh pocket on the back. And right. there's two different options in the pattern. You can either do a long handle so that you could carry it over your shoulder or you could do a shorter handle and just carry it by hand. And mm -hmm. of course you can adjust these however you want but these would be really easy to hook on a a hook right. in your sewing room or over a coat hanger, hang it in a closet. So right. many ways to do this. And these are ideal for packing things in your suitcase when you travel too. And super easy to make. So yeah. this pattern is called pocket packers. That's nice. Thank you, Annie. And then there's another question. It says, is there a pattern that would work for storage of embroidery hoops and their inner grid pieces that are used for the lining up a project in the hoop? Yes, so the, um, the tools of the trade, the large one, if you go to our website 
and click on the introduction video. We did put embroidery hoops in one of them and they fit really nicely. You'd, you'd want to adjust how you sew your divisions on those dividers, but you could make them so they fit just perfectly. And then the big mesh pocket on the side was perfect for putting the rolls of stabilizers. And, you know, I would probably take a pocket packers and maybe the smaller items that, you know, might slide around, put them in there and put that inside. So that's a really nice bag for carrying the um, embroidery hoops. Great. You, you've thought of all angles. I know that when we had you on as a guest before, I'd said, did, did you ever think you'd be, you know, engineering, never mind sewing? I mean, <laughs> because to engineer these bags is really quite amazing. And you guys have thought of every detail. Who you does? Know, there is a lot to think about. And we have a whole um, pattern development team. So when we're saying, ready yeah. to work on a new pattern, we all sit down and before we even sew a stitch, we talk about, you know, what we want it to cover, different ways we could design it. And then we usually assign it to one of us to go make a prototype that then we come back and, you know, everybody picks it apart and what could we change. My son, Casey, who's kind of in charge of all of our operations, comes to that meeting and he's really good at thinking outside the box and, you know, thinking of things. Tools of the trade is designed the way it is, largely because of input from Casey. I wanted something that you could carry a lot of rulers in. And I had a bag more similar to a place for everything. And it really wasn't ideal. And he said, you know, that makes no sense that that could be designed so much better. And it's like, okay, well, how? And so we got together and, and it really is a fabulous bag and it's small enough. I mean, you don't need to carry everything in the kitchen sink in there, but it's small enough that even though it's a big bag, because it's so narrow and compact, mm -hmm. you can carry everything you need without it, you know, just totally weighting you down. It's nice to know that it's a team effort there and the way you design the bags. I, you know, I was giving you all the credit, Annie. I thought it <laughs> yeah, was <well>. you. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Someone asked, is tools of the trade different from ruler wrap, which I have? Yes. So this is ruler wrap, which is hanging behind me. And this is one that we made using Tula Pink's um, All-Stars fabric. And it's designed so that you have all these mesh pockets that you can put rulers in. And then down at, this is the large one. Down at the bottom, there's a sleeve so you can put your mat in there. And then this can fold up and be carried. Um, so this is made to hang like in your sewing room or to fold up and carry to class. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a very different style. So Either does that one would be great. Does that fold into thirds, Annie? It will fold into thirds if you put a mat in it. If you only okay. put rulers in it, Glow's gonna bring me the small one. So the large one has a couple more, like this and this are extra besides what's in the small one. But here's what it looks like, the small one, when it has just rulers in it. So if I'll open this up. So yeah, you I'd like to see that because, you know, I'd like to think I could be this organized and hanging on the wall in my sewing room and then I wouldn't be able to find it because it'd be put away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the nice thing about it is because you can hang it on the wall and the pockets are made out of mesh so you can see what's in them. Right. It's really nice. But then if you want to travel and take it with you, you just roll it up and you're ready to go. So um, we've got straps that go all the way around. So it takes a minute to get it open and accessed. Well, it's nice and safe. It right? is. It's going to gonna... make sure that nothing falls out. I actually designed this pattern at the request of Creative Grids because they said we have so many people saying, I'm trying to take my big long rulers to class and you know they keep breaking. I need something to keep them safe. So, so this opens up. Wow. And so this is the small version. So mm -hmm. if you put, you know, your rulers in each one, then you could see if you had a mat in here, this holds up to a 12 by 18 inch mat and it um, fits that way. And then instead of folding it, as I did there, you fold it like this and carry it. So it's going to look kind of similar to the um, tools of the trade in that respect, but it's a very different way. The how you access it and what you can carry in it. There is a pocket on the back that you can put things in and then all the pockets on the inside. 
And again, then the, the casing at the top so you can hook it over your door. When you get to class, the way we recommend accessing it is kind of folding it accordion style mm -hmm. like this so that you can access all the pockets without it taking up a whole table. So Annie, just a question that I have, no one sent this, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so a, a ruler could fit into each one as you've shown. Could two rulers fit in or would it really yes. stretch or damage so, it in some way? So we designed this to have either a big pocket that goes all the way across if you had a great big long ruler, or you can, mm -hmm. if you see here, you, well, no, not there. Somewhere here, we've got one. That, so here's one that's divided. Or you can do two pockets. And then if you want to add extra zipper pulls and sew through some of those, then you can put smaller rulers in here. Gotcha. And these are, will hold up to 24 and a half inches wide. And um, give me that small one. So this is like a four and a half by... 24 and a half inch. So I'm not going to actually put it in the pocket, but you can see it's going to fit in there. And we added these strips on the side to give some extra padding to the corners, because we know that's, you know, if you're going to hit it, you're going to hit the end and you're right. going to. And that's where the damage is going to occur, right? Would the XL stripology ruler fit in the ruler wrap? You know, that's what I have to look and see if that's what I have in here. Is this the X? Yeah, this is the Stripology XL ruler. So what you would do on the ruler wrap with that one is put it down here in the bottom pocket, which is quilted and slide it in. And it would, you know, you could put your mat in there too. And then wow. you would fold this up in thirds. That's pretty amazing. So, Annie. Yes. so it fits in the ruler wrap. It also fits in the large tools of the trade. And do you have a pattern that you would recommend to hold all of Deb Tucker's Studio 180 rulers? I'm, um, I'm going to show you next a place for everything. And I did a version of it that I put a lot of specialty rulers in. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I have that packed, all those rulers packed in one that's not free spirit. But mm -hmm. I might show it to you anyway, just so you can see how that works. But I think the place for everything would be good for that. Um, we've got a lot of the um, Deb Tucker rulers and you know, if you laid them out, what I would recommend on this project, and it kind of depends, do you wanna roll it up and be able to take it cl to class? If you do, you've got to pay attention that these pockets are just the right size so that it folds and rolls. If you're only going to use it at home and hang it in your wall, you've got a lot more flexibility in changing the size of the pockets. So what I would do is cut out your background and then lay the rulers out and figure out what the best you know, placement is to make best use of your space and then make your pockets to fit that. So, you know, Deb Tucker's rulers would definitely fit nicely in one of these, but she's got so many different shapes and sizes and styles, you know, that you'd want to make it a little more customized for that. Well, can I hand you this back? Thank you, Annie, for explaining all that to us. All right, let's talk next about this pattern, which is called A Place for Everything. And this one, I made to coordinate with my beautiful soup hand oh, tools of the trade. So um, it's really fun when you have the whole line from these different designers because it all coordinates when you're done, but you know it doesn't have to all be the very same fabric. So we really right. enjoyed this fabric that looked like somebody had just taken the paintbrush and started going. Absolutely. So. A Place for Everything is a pattern that has been a really good seller for us since we introduced it in, I believe, 2013. It's a pattern that Tula Pink um, really promotes heavily. It's one of her favorite bags. And um, we decided last year that we wanted to update it, partly because we wanted to update the pattern to our newest style, 
Uh, we've learned a lot since we started writing patterns. We now have a professional graphic artist who does illustrations. She does way better than I did. And um, so we wanted to update that pattern, but is, we we're gonna do it. It's like, you know, do we wanna make some changes? And because so many people have made this pattern, we've received a lot of input and we've seen a lot of things that other people have done. And so we made a whole lot of changes to it. So really it's a, it's a very different bag than the original one, but it serves the same purpose. So the pattern is called A Place for Everything 2.0. We recommend um, making it, even if you've made A Place for Everything, it's like you're gonna be making a, a whole new bag. So um, let me show you some of the features of this. So the bag itself, uh, we changed, it used to be carried with a handle up here. And the problem was if you didn't have it zipped shut, things could fall out. So that's one of the biggest changes we made is we changed the orientation of the handles so that they're attached on the front and back and you have handles um, to carry it. We added pockets to the front and back of the bag, which didn't exist on the previous one. And then we added a carrying strap. So you can lengthen this and carry this crossbody, and it makes it much easier to carry. We changed the size a little bit. So it's a little bit taller, it's a little bit wider, and it's quite a bit deeper than the original. And the reason we did that is because we made some changes to the pages that go inside. And I'm going to show you that with this bag. So this is a version that we made using Tula's new Curiouser and Curiouser. And you may notice that this one looks, um, you know, it's the same fabric all the way around. This is how the pattern is written, that you use a main fabric for the front and back and the pockets. On Tula's, we wanted to mix it up a little bit and add some other fabrics. So on here, we quilted her dripping roses with these little card suits, I think it's called. Yes. And we used the dripping roses as the main fabric on the side strip but then we turned that around and used the, the what, what's the lining on this strip as the main fabric out here. And then we used the teacups for the pockets. So we just added a little more interest to this bag by mixing up the fabrics. So then when you open this bag, you're going to see what makes this, this bag so special. So it has pages wow. that you can feel and they fasten with uh, just a strap that holds them in. You can take them out and rearrange them. You can leave some at home. You can add extra pages. And there's just all kinds of ways you can customize this. So the pattern has three different styles of pockets. You can either do a style one pocket, which is basically one pocket. And you can make that with a zipper on the side or a um, slip opening at the top and we use fold over elastic to bind that so it stretches a little along with the pocket or you can do a style two pocket which puts two pockets on the on each side of the page if you want you can divide any of those so you can create extra pockets just by sewing divisions in them mm -hmm. or you can do a style three pocket which is what we did here where you have three pockets on each page the pattern also allows you to do um, vinyl pockets or mesh pockets. So what we did is we did vinyl on the front and we did mesh on the back. But if you wanted all your pockets to be mesh or you wanted all your pockets to be vinyl, you can do it however you want. So there's lots of room to customize this and make it be you know exactly what you want. Right, that's awesome. Tula's fabrics look beautiful in that. So Don't they? Yeah. yeah, so as Annie mentioned, that's called Curiouser and Curiouser by Tula Pink, and that will be shipping to uh, stores the uh, to your local quilt shop either the end of April or early May. So please be on the lookout for that. And uh, I, Annie, all those threads in that bag, I mean, that's eye candy too. I mean, <laughs> it, for sure. Just it like, just makes it so fun to see all the colors that are yeah. there. And, you know, if you're ready to start box. sewing, to be able to really easily see what what color you have and and zip open the pocket and pull out what you need and then put it back yes beautiful did i interrupt you we're going to say something more about the inside of the bag i'm sorry i was just going to say that on the inside of the bag we have a slip pocket on one side and a zippered pocket on the other side and we made both of those 
out of mesh to keep the bag a little more lightweight. It still provides visibility and it stretches a little so you can put a little more in there. Mm -hmm. But I know people are just chomping at the bit to get this new line of fabric. So they're going to be really thrilled to hear that it's going to be hitting stores soon. Well, you know, you know, it was interesting. Well, two things, Annie, before you close that up, what I think is fantastic is on the, uh, the cutting mat fits so perfectly in there. And it probably gives the bag a little bit more stability if you wanted it, you know, it I does. Mean, you know, so buy a bunch of cutting mats and put them in your bag. No. <laughs> but you know, it's always nice when you go to class to have a, a cutting mat this size, because you oh. need something right where you're working. And exactly. we made sure that it fits in there perfectly. Ulfa also makes a black fold up mat that has a cutting mat on one side and I think a pressing thing on the other side and that also fits perfectly oh. you probably wouldn't put it in the zippered one but it would fit really nicely in the Great. mesh pocket the slip pocket right. on the other side that's very nice when you were opening it you know because it's tulip pinks you know lying with the teacups and you know all the fun from you know Al, you know the theme of or the idea of Alice in Wonderland I was thinking of my niece because my niece loves to do tea parties and I was just wondering if there's a way to like make this bag in some way for you know a little girl who would love that you know? Oh, you know oh absolutely because you could you know design the pages so that she could put her dolls in here and her dog clothes or you know her little teacups and stuff what mm -hmm. I tell people when they want to make this custom you know is make the the cut the quilted fabric out for your page and then lay down on here what you want to go in the pockets and then figure out if you need to make adjustments to how the pockets are designed. So when we did the bag that had all the quilting rulers, we made it to hold Angela Walters rulers that she uses for ruler work when she's doing, you know, machine quilting on a domestic machine. I mm -hmm. just laid them out, decided which ones, you know, were about the same height. And then I, you know, I had to maybe add a half an inch to one pocket and take a half an inch off another one to make them fit. But just very minor changes ensured mm -hmm. that everything was going to fit. Right. I also tell people if you've, you know, if you've never made it before and aren't sure, make it like the pattern is designed because you will have no problem finding stuff to fit in it. Right. And then you understand how it works. And then when you're ready to make one that's exactly for what you have, you'll understand how it all goes together. So there's little things like we put the style one pockets for the back because you have to pick one side. So we sew the pockets on this side first. And if, you know, when you sew this pocket in place, if you had a pocket sewn on back here, you know, you're, you'd have a line of stitching go through it. So mm -hmm. we sew these on first, and then we don't bother to sew divisions in these. However, on one that I did that I wanted quilting rulers in, I put an extra slide on this zipper. And then after I had the pocket sewn on, I came back and just re-sewed along this line, and that created two pockets on the back. So uh -huh. there's you just things you have to think about, but once you understand that, you know, it's easy to do. The right. video for this project shows a lot of options. And then we've been doing regular weekly Facebook Lives every week. And last two weeks ago, we featured a place for everything. And I showed how to the one I made for the rulers and I showed, you know, tips for how to customize that. So if this is a bag you're interested in making, make sure you go check out our Facebook lives. We have them on our Facebook channel and also on our YouTube channel as well. Annie, do yeah. you have a lot of um, links up for all of, you know, all of your bags on your Facebook page? I mean, on your, uh, on your business page? I mean, if anyone wants to go and look, you have all kinds of links for all the bags? Yes, or? yes. Every, so there's two things that you can know. First of all, our patterns, all you have to do is type in the name of the pattern, or if you're not sure, just click on the tab that says patterns. And we have a lot of categories. So we'll have one that's called let's get organized and a place for everything obviously is for organizing your stuff. So it's probably the first one that pops up in that category. So you can search for things by categories. We have one for babies, you know, one for travel, all kinds of ways to do that. And then we also have a photo gallery. So if you click on photo gallery, it's going to bring up all the models that we've made. And those are arranged from the ones we just finished back. So if you click on that, 
you're going to see all the models, all these models are pictured on there and you can filter it. You can say, I want to see all the models made with Curiouser and Curiouser, or I want to see everything made with Free Spirit Fabrics. And it will bring those up and you can get lots of inspiration from that. And there's yeah. extra pictures. So yeah, there's a lot of, lot of really helpful information on there. And then we have a link that says tutorials that is full of free tutorials. And then for all of the patterns that we've done for about the past three years, we've got the add on videos. So you can even click on the add on videos and see which patterns have videos and shop that way. So it's kind of up to you how you do it. Before I forget, one thing I want to mention about our add on videos that go with our patterns, we sell them for $5. However, when you buy the paper pattern, you get in that pattern a coupon that takes that $5 off. So you get the video free. So what we always say is get the pattern and get that coupon code and then order the add on video. And when you get the video, it goes into your digital library, which is hosted on our website. And you can watch that over and over again as many times as you like, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, you know, on right. Sunday night, whenever you want to watch it. It's not, it's available forever. Right. That's awesome. That's good to know. Thank you for telling us. You are welcome. Um, I know that when I'm sewing, sometimes it's like I keep backing up the video and let, let me see that again. You know, let me see that again. <laughs> For sure. It's <laughs> really nice to be able to do that. that. I yeah. find that I, I uh, listen to videos a lot while I'm sewing. So I sew a lot on the weekends and I'll just put videos on and kind of listen to them in the background. But some days I don't get much sewing done because my nose is right up against mm -hmm. the screen trying to look at what they're doing. I and, I understand. Uh, I do the same. Now, Annie, for all of these bags that you've shown us, you on at your website, you have all of the uh, products to make them, like the vinyl, the stabilizer, the zips, the mesh, everything, correct? Everything. The only thing we don't have is the fabric. So right. go to your that's local right. quilt shop and, and ask that's for the right. free spirit fabrics. But, free spirit but fabric. that's one of our things is anything that you need to make it, we sell. So all of those things are available. And then for some of them, like a place for everything, we have a bundle. So it will have all the different products that you need on one page. You just click, you know, what color you want of each item and you get a discount by buying all of those items together. So that's a, a really nice way to buy those as, as well. I don't think we, we don't have them for every single pattern, but a lot of them we do, especially the more popular ones. Right, great, thank you. Before we leave the organizational stuff, I wanted to show you a couple of other bags that we made. And these we made using Valerie Wells' new line Enchanted. Uh, yes. which I think is so gorgeous. It's enchanting. <laughs> it's enchanting. It for yes. sure is. And as you can see, you know, it can look totally different depending on which, which one you use. And so this is a pattern called In Control. And this is one called Catch All Caddy. People often ask me, what's your favorite pattern? And I would probably have to say this one because it holds so much stuff. It keeps it organized, easy to access. And, you know, it's not hard to make. So in control is just a smaller version of catch all caddy. I usually make this one to set next to my sewing machine because it has a small enough footprint that there's mm -hmm. room there and I can put my scissors, my snippers, my stiletto, you know, all the mm -hmm. things that I need right there while I'm sewing. And mm -hmm. then I make this one to go on the work table. So it's got handles, it's easy to carry. It's got little grab handles so you can move it from side to side. But what is especially nice about this pattern, instead of, it's got pockets all the way around the outside, but instead of pockets on the inside, it has these, what we call bellowed dividers. So they're not, mm -hmm. see if I can show this. They're not sewn in at the bottom. Can you see my fingers? I don't know that mm -hmm. I can get it, but they're open at the bottom. It will be easier if I do this. So let's say you've got your, bottle of water that you want and you can fit that in that pocket and it goes it opens all the way down so it's not sewn across the bottom oh, that know you know right. prevents so you from being there. able to push your push your right. stuff all the way down right. so it expands really well and holds things and keeps them from tipping over and mm -hmm. it's just a really handy little bag That's great. i i um a lot of times will put like a plastic cup to hold mm -hmm. all my little things into mm -hmm. one of the dividers and that yeah. makes that a little easier to hold all your little things right but 
you've got okay. all your outside stuff and then you've got still the inside open to store a ton of stuff. Right. And this is Enchanted from Val Wells and that is shipping to the local quilt shops in May. Look for that in May. Annie, you, uh, these bags, uh, you know, are very inspirational. You know, every time we have you, you know, you motivate me. You know, I get the pattern. <laughs> you know, I'm all ready to go. I think we need to do a Zoom Saturday sew together or something. I think we should. We should, for sure. But very inspirational. I mean, you think of everything. I love that bag. I really love it too. And I wanted to show you this. So the the this um, particular fabric from Val, right down the middle of the fabric, had this gorgeous, gorgeous medallion that she block printed on there. Mm -hmm. And we fussy cut that so that that goes across oh, the bottom the bag. and oh, all the way around the bag. Nice. We also yeah. made a place for everything out of this fabric. Unfortunately, it's off at a trunk show, so I didn't have it here to show today. But we did the same thing on the side strip on that bag and thought that was really pretty. I guess it only doesn't show on that end because we put a different pocket on. We yeah. must not have had enough fabric. We're really good at using every yes. little bit of fabric. We don't throw away very much fabric at all because well, we have so many patterns that use just little bits of fabric. In fact, th this is another one I wanted to show you. So this is a pattern called Clam Up. Great for toiletries, um, chargers, sewing supplies. And this one was a really fun one to um, show lots of um, the Enchanted line because this pattern has five sizes in it. I love that. And this size is my favorite to make, to put my wonder clips on in, because oh. I can zip, I use a double slide zipper and I can mm -hmm. zip it up a little on each side. And then I just keep this next to my sewing machine and drop mm -hmm. the clips in as I use them. And it's just the perfect size. It'll fit inside my catch-all right. caddy and I'm ready to go. Right. Sounds like you're a very organized sewer, Annie. We should see well, my sewing room. If you looked at my sewing room, you probably <laughs> probably wouldn't say it, but I try to be. <laughs> well, I, I love your idea suggestions. That's great. And I, I love all five of these clam up bags. I mean, they're they're perfect for so many purposes. They really are. And it was fun to do a variety of fabrics from the line, but yet they all blend together. So mm -hmm. when we do that, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll do a darker print for the small and the large. We'll do a lighter print for the, or the extra small that is, an extra large. We'll mm -hmm. do a, a lighter print here and then we'll do a medium print on the inside. So they all coordinate, um, but give you a lot of different varieties. You can make them all out of the same fabric. There's so many things you can do. The pattern includes instructions for making them without any quilting, but it also includes instructions for making them with quilted fabric. So mm -hmm. because many of our patterns have you quilt a big piece of fabric and cut your pieces out from it, you usually end up with some leftover quilted fabric. And these little bags are perfect for using that because this bag uses a piece of fabric about this size. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can just cut one of those out and you've got a great little gift for someone special. The other thing that we did on some of these is we have a product called Slicker that's an iron-on laminate, and you can turn any smooth fabric into a laminated fabric using it. So we laminated the fabric on the inside of some of the bags. So if you wanted to use it as a toiletry bag, it'd be really easy to wipe it clean. Wow, that's awesome. That'd be great to give for, you know, the holidays or birthdays or Mother's Day is coming. Absolutely. Right? I wanted to show you too, we have some new leather labels that are going to be available wow. for people to purchase. They have our new by a by Annie logo, but it's got just a buy in an A and mm -hmm. that's perfect for sewing on the bag mm -hmm. and, you know, taking that. it up a notch, making it really classy and special. And those right. will be available in five colors. So those will be really fun to embellish your bags. Yes, for sure. I like those. Very nice. Next, I want to show you, so we talked about this being a great gift for Mother's Day. Here's your gift for Father's Day. So this is a pattern called double zip gear bag. 
Mm-hmm. Obviously, you'd w- probably want to pick a more masculine yes. fabric if you were making this for your dad but, right. or your husband. But this is a style that the guys like. It, I've heard many guys say, oh, that's like my dop bag that I had when I was in the army. So mm-hmm. this is an updated version of our pattern called double zip gear bag. Um, and when we updated this, we really didn't change the design or 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 style a lot, but we added two more sizes. So the original pattern had just one size, which was basically the size of the medium. Mm -hmm. And we decided, well, it'd be nice to have one big enough that you could put your shoes and stuff in it. And Mm -hmm. it'd be nice to have a smaller one if you want just a little bit of space. So here's the small one. So this is again, Anna Maria's Bright Eyes fabric. And we just had a whole lot of fun making this. And one thing interesting that I wanted to show you on this one, we quilted one fabric. So we used this for one side and we used the birds for the other side. So Mm -hmm. when we went to make the bag, the birds are the lining on this one and the poppies are the lining on this one. Oh, look at that. And then we were really short on fabric. So um normally we would use oh no actually this is designed this way we use a third fabric a coordinating fabric that we use for all the bindings and also we use it as a lining on the flap so that it covers the raw edges of the zippers Mm -hmm. but that adds some extra interest when you open it but these are fabulous because you really can see everything that's on the inside of these and they've got pockets mesh pockets on each side on one side, on the outside, they have a zippered uh, quilted fabric pocket and on the other side, a zippered mesh pocket. So these are really fabulous for carrying your sewing supplies, you know, packing when you're going on a trip, toys, um, Mm -hmm. perfect for kids' toys. I made, when I made the original pattern, I gave all the prototypes to my grandson who was little at the time, but he loved being able to zip that open and shut and yep. carry it. There's a little grab here and also a grab handle here. Oh, that's Those great. are really fun. Yeah, they always like to pack up and move around. <laughs> People so, have really been intrigued with this fabric, the stacked bowls from Anna Maria's line. I get so many questions about what fabric is that? That's so fun. Yes, so all of these fabrics are from Bright Eyes as um, Annie just said, and they deliver in May to your local quilt shop. Those poppies really look spectacular on that bag. Don't they look pretty on yeah, that? Yeah, they really do. Anna Maria has such beautiful prints. She really does. And I loved the birds. And I, I yeah. tried hard to, you know, fussy cut them a bit so that they fit on each of the pockets. Um, mm-hmm. Well, you did a nice she's, job. she's got it. I mean, there's enough of them that that's not hard to do. You didn't right. have to. And same with the poppies. I tried to center those on yeah, each no, side. Yeah, you did a nice job. They're beautiful. Yeah. Looks beautiful. Those nice are fun. Done. All right, the next pattern that I want to show you is a brand new pattern and it's for a purse and it's called Switchback. And you're going to see there's a couple here, one we made with Enchanted, one we made with Bright Eyes. And then I have three others and you're going to see how different this bag can look just depending on the fabric that you choose. Wow. So this is one that we made using Tula's Curiouser and Curiouser. Both yep. of these we made using Tim Holtz's Abandoned. And, yes. and so the pattern I'm going to, let me tell you about the bag and then I'll tell you what we did special for fabrics. So the pattern is designed so that you've got just a nice kind of slouchy bag to carry, you know, wherever you want to go. And you can either carry it with this long handle crossbody or over your shoulder, or you can pull down on these ah. and wear it as a backpack. Very nice. So that's why we called it switchback. Yes. And okay. we designed it to use a variety of fabrics. So there is a main fabric that becomes kind of the body of the bag. And then mm-hmm. we have two, what we call block fabrics. Um, and we alternate those So you get this fun kind of checkerboard effect on the front and also on the back. Then um, there's a, you open the flap up and you've got a welt pocket right here with a Mm -hmm. slip pocket behind it. So it's really great to put your phone, your gloves, you know, things that you need to get quickly and easily, your money inside here. And there's a 
a swivel hook on here so you can close that. Right. And then when you open it, it's got a zipper all the way across the top. Yeah. It lies flat. And then inside there is a, wow. I'm trying to figure out how you're seeing this. So there's a full height zippered pocket on one side and uh -huh. a um, elasticized mesh pocket okay. on the other side that you can divide however you want. The pattern right. I think suggests you do it in half, but you, you can switch that up however you want. So lots of place for everything you want to carry mm -hmm. and you know just fun features. There are also a couple of accessory straps on the side that you can hook your keys on. Mm -hmm. We also like these because after you get your bag zipped, you can fasten those, push your zipper slide down in there. You can bring these up and fasten them. Oh. And it brings the sides of the bag in so right. that nothing's gonna fall out those edges and it, and, and it gives it a little more pleasing shape, I think. Wow. So that's, that's awesome. switch back. We watched Tula Pink um, doing um, one of her intros to Curiouser and Curiouser. And she was talking about how she quilts the fabric when she does these faces, because that's mm -hmm. always a dilemma. You know, do you have the lines go straight through their face? And so we did um, what she suggested and did a triangle around the face oh, so that we weren't uh -huh. quilting through her her beautiful features. And then right. we just did parallel lines to that. Yes, it's quilted beautifully, very nice. This was a really fun bag to make. This bag and this one, so this one we totally skipped the color block design and we just did one fabric for everything. We mm -hmm. made it exactly the way the pattern was. So there is still a seam between these and that's important because you're gonna have a line of stitching through here and it's gonna look funny if you you know, don't do some quilting in there and some right. stitching, but you can see you get a very different look by doing that. This one also was made with just a single piece of fabric here. So we did the abandoned fabric and fussy cut parts of it so that these two parts featured the turquoise, these two parts featured the gold. And mm -hmm. so we didn't have to buy two different fabrics. We just used one parts of one fabric. And then again, a different fabric for the main and a different fabric for the coordinates. So mm -hmm. these, these I think would be bags that even a guy would carry. This is a, you know, right. a great just bag to carry around town, would make a great man bag out of the right fabrics. Exactly. Could you give us a peek of the inside of one of those? Sure. So those are two Holtz and those fabrics deliver to shops in April. And that's Tim Holtz abandoned one shipped last fall. So shops may already have some of it in this, these at Annie's showing, look at that, it's great. So yeah, we did um, that one. And then on this one, we did a very similar print. Yeah. This one is the one that we made when we filmed the add-on video. So people who watch that video will see a lot of this fabric. Oh, and yeah. then we we um, did the, the darker fabric. Actually, I'm gonna turn this one inside out so you can see the inside a little more easily. And Sharon, I'm looking at the clock and we are almost at an hour. Do we wanna wrap right. it up? We'll keep going. Do you have a lot more to show us or? I have some travel bags and some baby things. Well, I think we should keep going. We have 400 viewers. Maybe okay. send us thumbs up if you want us to stay on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is what it looks like on the inside. You've got this full height zippered pocket here. And then on the other side, you've got a slip pocket with a, that's elasticized. So it holds a lot of stuff. So we used uh, the same fabric here and here, which is actually the same fabric we used for the coordinating fabric. It just Very looks nice. so different depending on which part you see. I'm glad I you love this out. line. Yeah. Oh, so Annie, I asked everyone to give us thumbs up if they wanted us to stay on and we're getting tons of thumbs up. So we'll All stay right. on a little longer. We'll run over the hour. All right. Thanks. Turning that bag good. inside out because it's very nicely done, very nicely made. It was hard to say and say, uh, see inside the bag. So yeah. that's great. The look one the thing that we really, really feature on all of our bags is we want them to look as good on the inside as on the outside. So one of the hallmarks of a Biani pattern is that all of the edges are finished and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just beautifully finished and not hard to do. Um, we've got some really great techniques. For instance, when you do this seam here, um, the way to flatten that so that it makes it easy to sew your bag together, um, just lots right. of good techniques. 
Well, no, for sure. I mean, I think that that's what I admire so much about your bags is that they're so professionally finished. Thank you know, you. I'm going to take time to make something. I want it to look good. That's right. Yeah. You know, it really doesn't take any more time to do it, make it look good. Well, maybe a little bit more, but not a lot. So we just love this um, Tim Holtz fabric and think it is so perfect for um, travel bags. So I wanted to show you several that we made. So this is one bag that lots and lots and lots of people have made. This is probably one of our best sellers. It's called the Ultimate Travel Bag. It's a simple bag to make. Uh, I've had people who have never sewn before who've made this bag and it's very accomplishable. So it's got a double zip gear or double zip gear bag. It's got a double zip at the top so you can open it and it goes, the zipper goes all the way down. So you've got really good access to everything inside. There's slip pockets on the end, slip pocket and a zippered pocket on the front. And then on the back, there's a slip pocket and also a trolley sleeve. So you can hook this over the handles on your rolling luggage and not have to carry your heavy bag over your shoulder. Yeah, but it's got mm -hmm. grab handles you can carry. And then it also has a padded shoulder strap. And I think it is so gorgeous made out of Tim Holtz's abandoned fabric. It is, you did a beautiful job. I love that, it's very handsome. So, I mean, whether as a, you know, if a man was to carry it or a woman, I mean, it's a great bag. Yeah. You know, yeah, it would make a great, great bag for a guy, I think. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a couple other travel bags. This is another one that I think would any guy would like. It's big and, and, you know, make a great gym bag, great travel bag, but it's got a little more of a masculine shape, I think. Mm -hmm. So this one is called Travel Duffel 2. And you're looking at the back. So again, it has the trolley sleeves so you can hook it over your rolling luggage. And right. then on the front, it's got zippered pockets on each side and a slip pocket in the middle. And it's got pockets on the ends, each end. And then inside there's a, a divided slip pocket that goes the full length all the way across one side. Mm -hmm. So. And, and all so, of these bags, I haven't really mentioned it, but we use Soft and Stable. It's a product we developed that's a, a foam stabilizer. That's what we use in all of our bags to make them stand up and hold their shape. So basically what you do is you take your main fabric, your Soft and Stable, your lining fabric, put them together, quilt them, cut the pieces for your bag out, sew your bag together, bind the edges, and you're done. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, I have a basic sewing machine. Would I have an issue sewing any of these bags? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I've seen people make all of these bags on a featherweight, which is a really little machine that, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't have a big throat opening. The main thing that I think is important when you're sewing bags, if at all possible, have your machine even with your table so that you're fabric is, you know, not falling off the side of the bed or something, because that mm -hmm. makes it much easier. On some of these, when you um, sew the ends together and bind it, you're going through several layers. But really, any machine should be able to handle that. Just don't go too fast. And the other really important thing when you're doing that is let the machine do the work. Let the machine pull the fabric through because when you start pushing and pulling on your fabric, you end mm -hmm. up bending your needle and yeah. you're gonna end up breaking your needle. But it's not the bulk that's causing the needle to break, it's the bending that's causing the needle to break. So right. yeah, I think you'd be fine. Um, one thing that I really appreciate on a machine is a uh, needle up and needle down function. If I can make sure that my needle always stops in the down position, that's mm -hmm. helpful too if I need to readjust because things aren't getting wonky and out of place. Um, but yeah, you, you should Annie, have your butt. In terms of a needle, I know we've talked about this before too. I mean, would you recommend a denim needle? Or would you recommend a regular universal needle? Or You know what I use all the time is a top stitch needle. I learned this when I worked with Superior Threads. They um, you know, asked quilters, all the expert quilters, what needle do you use? And over and over and over again, they heard people saying the top stitch needle. And there's several things about a top stitch needle. First of all, it has a really strong, sturdy shank. There's a groove down the shank. So your thread rests in that. So mm -hmm. as your threads going in and out and in and out and in and out of the fabric, your 
thread is back in that groove so it's not shredding it. Right. And the best thing about that needle is the eye is twice as big, which oh. not only helps prevent shredding and fraying of your thread, but it makes it way easier to thread it. Right. So exactly. I that's I use a 9014 top stitch needle and that's pretty much the needle I use for everything that I do. We sew mesh with it, we sew vinyl with it, we sew quilted fabric with it, we quilt with it and wow. Unless I have a really fine fabric that I don't want to have holes in, you know, then right. I'll switch to a smaller needle. But All right, so the standard that. cottons with the thickness and everything that you're using, what did you say? A 1914? 1914. Oh, 90 Normally, they say to use, um, you know, that the, the eye of the needle changes in reference to the thread. So we sew with sew fine number 50. And that is a, a finer thread. We could go down to like a 70, I think, or an 80, but that bigger eye I think is helpful and it's a little bit stronger needle. So we, yeah, we use the 9014 most of the time. Mm -hmm. All right, that's great information. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Someone also asked the question, what do we use for the straps on our bags? We use a PolyPro strapping. I've got a package of it right here. Um, that's just, you know, really strong and sturdy. Obviously, I would never put a white handle on a bag. So our techniques have you make fabric tubes and then you pull the strapping into them. So you've got the strength of the um, strapping in there, but you've got the beauty of the fabric. This enables us to make fabrics that completely match our bag. So right. our, our handles and straps are made out of um, just cotton quilting fabric. I wanted to show you a smaller version of this bag too. This is one called um, Get Out of Town. So it's the little sister to the travel duffel, basically made exactly the same way. The only difference is because it's so much smaller, we skipped the two pockets, extra pockets on the front. We have just a slip zip pocket here, but we, and then we didn't have room to do the, do we have a trolley sleeve back here? No, it, the handles are too narrow together to work right. as a trolley sleeve but right. it's got um, slip pockets on the end. And I believe this one has extra pockets on the inside that the other one doesn't have. So one thing that we do on a lot of our bags is we make a, we put a stabilizer in. These are um, plexiglass uh, stabilizers that we sell and we'll make a fabric sleeve so it looks pretty. Right. You I can like take that. it out and wash it. But on the inside of this bag, but you, you noticed how that soft and stable really made this bag stand up and hold its shape and not be sloppy and floppy. Right. And this is all Tim Holtz fabrics. Uh, there's a few questions about this. So this is Tim Holtz and they're made in abandoned one and abandoned two fabrics as well as uh, provisions, Tim Holtz provisions. So this bag we have, um, mesh pockets slip on one side and fabric slip pockets on the other side. Mm -hmm. And the divisions in the pockets happen when you sew the handles on. So you're pretty much limited to having these divisions in here, but they're, mm -hmm. they're really useful sizes. Right. And, and then one, one reason I think a lot of people prefer making this bag is all the bindings on the inside. There's not binding on the outside. So, you know, if they're not real confident in their binding abilities, this is nice. But I, one question that I recently got is, you know, how do you determine whether the binding is going to be on the inside of the bag or the outside of the bag? And for a place for everything, we put it on the outside because we want it that structure and shape. So you can see this bag, how different it would look if the binding was on the outside, then it gives it a more rounded appearance when the binding's on the inside. Right. So if somebody wanted to make it with the binding on the outside, all they would do is put lining sides together when they sew it together rather than main fabric sides together. And they could certainly do that. Right, that's a great tip. Um, Annie, one of our guests says that they have the pattern, but they have no confidence to make it. Do you have any recommendations on that? Just tackle it. The thing that I can tell you about our patterns is they look really overwhelming when you first open them because there's a lot of instructions, but we tell you every step of the way what you want, what you need to do. And there's little check marks in front of the steps. So check them off as you do them. So if you get interrupted, you know where you were. We do have a series of patterns called Biani Basics, and there's four different patterns. 
that teach you all our basic techniques. If you've never made one of our patterns before, I would highly recommend that you go to our website, um, click on the patterns tab, scroll down to the Biani Basics category and download those patterns and videos. They're all free and they're easy, simple projects that you can make in an afternoon. But as you make those, you'll learn about working with soft and stable, how to quilt it, how to work if you don't wanna quilt it, um, putting in zippers, working with mesh and fold over elastic, um, binding edges, making your own custom bias binding. There's so many skills that apply across the board to all of our patterns, and it's a really great way um, to learn those and master those before you tackle a big bag. The thing about this bag is it's one piece of fabric that goes all the way around. So you have this big flat piece of fabric, you sew your pockets on, you sew your handles on, you sew the pockets on the ends and then you put those pieces together and bind it. So, you know, there's not a lot of steps. One mm -hmm. thing that I will share with you that was hard for me to get through my head when I started making this is whichever piece of the bag has curves on it. So in this case, we round the corners on the ends so that it's easier to sew this together. Whichever mm -hmm. piece has the curves on it, that's the piece that you want to have flat against your sewing machine when you first sew the pieces together. So this is going to seem awkward to people to have this bag, you know, way up here and be sewing down here, but it makes all the difference in making that easy versus hard. Mm -hmm. So right. sew your pieces together, sew your binding on, and then when you turn your binding around and stitch it down, you know, then you'll sew with this going that way. But mm -hmm. that seems kind of counterintuitive, but it really makes a difference. And our Easy Does It, which is our last pattern in our Buy Any Basic series, you do make a dimensional bag. So you'll kind of learn that there. And we talk a lot about that. Those videos all go step-by-step step from beginning to end through the project. And we cover a lot of things like how to cut with a rotary cutter and you know all kinds of things like that. So they're just really, really helpful for, even if you're not a beginner, we've had lots of people who say, I've been sewing for years and I still learned things in those. Mm -hmm. so, so those are good ones. Yeah, those are great tips, Annie. And I think that what you just said about how to run that through the machine is great because you keep the bulk up versus under and like it makes it, it smoother. It makes run. it much easier to do right. those, those corners without sewing pleats in them. Right, exactly. All right, I have one last set of bags to show you. Oh, and, and these are this, we get This is, uh, Denise, how do you say it? Burkett or Burkett? Yeah. Denise Burkett. Burkett. All right. And yes. she's from Australia, right? Yes. She's a, an artist for Free Spirit Fabrics. And this fabric is delivering in June to your local quilt shop. And she lives in Australia. And this is called Stillness in Nature, right? Yes. The right. collection is called Stillness in Nature. Thank you. You're welcome. When, <laughs> we, <laughs> when we got this fabric, um, we looked at it and said, you know, we've been wanting to do a set of our baby patterns that don't scream baby because, mm -hmm. you know, modern mothers don't want, you know, right. cutesy right. stuff. They want a bag that they can carry. Right, so exactly. this is our pattern called Every Day, Every Way. And I designed this when my daughter was pregnant um, to make a diaper bag for her. I mean, mm -hmm. it obviously, it makes a great bag for all kinds of purposes, but it really makes a great diaper bag as well. So this is a good size bag, uh, but not so big that it's really heavy. The thing about this bag, the reason it's called Every Day, Every Way is that you can carry it a multitude of ways. I tell people, Think about how you want to carry it and make the options that go with that. You don't have to make them all. Mm -hmm. So it comes basically with some padded straps. These have soft and stable in them. So they're really comfortable to carry. They're attached to the bag. And then we have big pockets front and back that cover um, the straps as they go down. There's magnets on these. So they um, stay mm -hmm. closed really nicely. And then we have slip pockets on each side and these are big enough you can put a baby bottle in here a sippy cup mm -hmm. you know any of those things i think this would be an ideal bag to take to and from work too because you could put your folders and papers and stuff here right all right so then we have the option of adding a carrying strap with a pad so you could carry it over your shoulder we have the option of stroller straps so you can oh. hook those on the same tabs and carry mm -hmm. it on your, sh your stroller, or we have the option of carrying it as a backpack. So wow. 
straps here. If you, you know, if you add all these and you don't want to carry it as a backpack, you can just unhook them down here and stuff the straps oh, down into that right. pocket to get them right. out of the way. There's a lot so of options. Yes. Lots and lots of options. If you mm -hmm. make all of the options, it adds a fair amount to the cost because you've got a lot of hardware. It also adds to the weight. So, you know, if you're never going to carry it as a backpack, just leave those off. Right. Right. So there's plenty of ways you can do that. Then on the inside of this bag, we have, I think I'm going to have to turn it inside out to show you. Well, one thing we have is a changing pad, oh. which is very basic, but right. you know, just to lay baby yeah. on when you go into the place. And uh, isn't that a gorgeous fabric? It I is. just it's love beautiful. the design of that. Yes, Denise does a beautiful job with her. Um, maybe I'm just gonna fold this down. So on the back is a full height zippered pocket that goes all the way across. And then what we did on the other side, instead of pockets, we did bellow dividers like we did in Catch All Caddy. So yeah. these open up and you can put, you know, several diapers or a package of wet wipes or mm -hmm. a baby bottle or a sippy cup and all of those fit in here and don't fall over. So right. this is just a really, really handy bag and, and fun to make. Yeah, it's beautifully done. Very nice. So that is called Every Day, Every Way. And then the other things that we made, it's hard to believe that this is the same line. Um, I know. But really pretty. So this is a pattern called Backseat Babysitter. And we designed this to put in the car. My daughter told me the other day, that backseat babysitter has saved my car because her six-year-old is always putting his feet on the back of her seat. And oh. so his feet are hitting this instead of the seat and her, her seat's staying much cleaner. But uh -huh. so this um, strap at the top is designed to go around the headrest on uh -huh. the front seat. And then there's a strap at the bottom that you hook around it. And then this, you know, is just against the back of the seat. So uh -huh. we designed this so that you can put the iPad in here and the kids mm -hmm. can watch movies. We made it so it zips open at the top and you can put it in, but then we added a zipper on this side so you can bring the headphones out and uh -huh. the kids can listen to Frozen for the thousandth time and you don't have to, um, but that, and then we've got um, holders for drinks and these are big enough that you can put a big gulp in there. I mean, they will hold even your big water bottles. Uh -huh. There's mesh pockets here. There's a zippered pocket. So you've right. got that there, another slip pocket down here, and then mesh pockets on, all, on top of this. Yeah. So, you know, all the things that you need to carry in the car when you've got kids in there, you've mm -hmm. got rooms to organize them and keep them all um, in right. one place. Right. The one Very thing that nice. I didn't mention earlier about soft and stable, it has good insulative qualities. So if you put, you know, a cup in here that has ice in it, you're not going to have condensation dripping down. Um, this prevents that. The other way we designed this bag is so that you can use it um, and hang it on the stroller. So it's got okay. these straps that you can hook over the stroller and it right. just folds in half and, you know, they can take it out and have everything they need there. Right. So th because of the zippers on this, you're not going to worry about whatever is in that pocket falling right. out when you flip it over. Right. Wow. So that pattern is called backseat babysitter and, mm -hmm. you know, a really different appearance for something for kids made with this fabric. And then the last one that I want to show you is one of my very favorites. This is a pattern called changing station. And this also was inspired by my daughter when my grandson was probably about two. She said, you know, I don't need to carry a big diaper bag. I don't need a bunch of changes of clothes. All I need is, you know, one set of clothes a diaper, some wet wipes. Right. Now I need a smaller bag. So uh -huh. we made this and, you know, depending on the fabrics, even dad will carry this one. So right. it's got a pocket in the front for keys, wallet, those types of things, a mm -hmm. handle for carrying it easily, a strap where you can hook it on the stroller or on another bag. Mm -hmm. And then when it opens up, you've I can undo that Velcro. You've got a pocket on top for diapers, a pocket below that for wet wipes, and then a changing oh, pad changing that, um, mm. that is big enough that even when Liam, I mean, this lasted Liam all the time he was in diapers. And the wow. nice thing about it is that Velcro's in, oh. so you can take this out and throw it in the wash if it, you know, get something mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. We thought this fabric was perfect <laughs> for a changing station 
changing pad because exactly. you know a kid could poop on here and you'd never notice it <laughs> exactly exactly wow you've thought of every detail in these bags Jeanette. and again because these are made out of soft and stable you can throw this in the washer over and over and it's going to come out looking brand new and it's going to be really soft for the baby to lay on too right right wow those are very nicely done annie Thank you so much. One uh, question I see on the screen is, can any of these be adapted for a walker? Um, I think, you know, depending on the size on a walker, I think um, backseat babysitter would be really nice for a walker. We mm -hmm. keep getting requests for a walker bag and we just need a million hours in every day to make that happen. But in yep. the meantime, I think this would be a really nice bag to carry on a walker. You might, um, the way this is designed, it's got little Velcro straps that you can hook over and then they close. So you mm -hmm. might you know, need to adjust the measurements or something a little bit, maybe change these so that they're made the same way so that you could hook it around the bottom and fasten it. Mm -hmm. But um, lots of ways to do that too. Yeah, it's a great suggestion. Wow, very nicely done, Annie. And that Denise Burkett fabric looks gorgeous in those bags. So, um, do you have any more bags of free spirit fabrics? <laughs> you know I know you I, do, but. <laughs> I have one more laying on the floor here that I um, grabbed last minute. This is a, a sneak peek of a pattern that's going to be coming towards the end of the year. It's an update of our travel essentials pattern. Mm -hmm. And this is a bag that you can use to carry all your toiletries when you travel or sewing supplies but it opens up and you can hang it in the bathroom. It's got a zippered mm. pocket at the bottom. It's got pockets along here. The current version is available and looks very similar to this. We've just changed um, how some of the things are done to simplify it. And we've added a pocket on the outside to come cover some of the stitching that would show out there. It includes a flat iron case and oh. um, it's a really fun one to make. And we really thought this one was fun made with um, Enchanted. Val has one of the fabrics that has all kinds of affirmations on it. Yeah. So this says creative, brave, capable, beautiful. We thought that was really appropriate for a bag that you would use to carry your um, toiletries and makeup and stuff in. Yes, absolutely. So that's Enchanted and that's delivering to fabric shops in May. And what's the name of that um, bag, Annie? The, this one that you this just one heard. is called travel essentials travel so. essentials but it's an updated version of the one you already have yes the one we have is very similar and you you know you'd have great success making it we've had it for quite a while lots of people have made it we're just updating it so that we can do a video to go with it and it will have our new layout and design and better illustrations and things right so right. but that won't be out until probably october or november so watch for that then mm -hmm. So Annie, I mean, it, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for being a guest today. We always love to have you on our Inspired by Free Spirit Fabrics. And look at the inspiration that Annie has given us today. More thumbs up, more you, thumbs up. You. All right, well, it's Be been good. really fun. Um, do you wanna announce the giveaway that we're going to do? Well, we are, I, I want you to show the pattern. And I have no idea what the question is, Annie. Do you have anything? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we thought about the giveaway, but we didn't think about the question. I would say, let's have people tell us um, which fabric and which pattern they want to make. Um, right. You know, or what, what combination they would put together and how they'd use it. And right. we'll pick one lucky winner. And basically what we've done is put together a kit for this bag. This is our new pattern again called Switchback. Um, Free Spirit is providing the fabrics as similar to this as they can. They, yeah. They're kind of limited on fabric, but you can see the fabrics we put together and um, we've got everything else that you need. So the pattern, and this actually is the cover girl on this pattern, oh. um, a yard of soft and stable, you'll have some leftovers, some fusible interfacing, which we use on some of the inner pockets and things, a couple of zippers, some strapping to go in the handles and some fold over elastic that we use on the elasticized pocket on the inside and then all the hardware to 
to make the handles and the flap that closes. And so you can carry it as a backpack or as a purse. Yes, so, that's beautiful. There's a lot of pieces that go to making that, Annie. This bag has a ton of features. And one thing that I've told people about this bag, it's got a lot of techniques that are new to buy any patterns. So when you make this, you're going to learn like four different ways to do pockets and three different ways to do zippers and you know some stuff that we've never done. So set aside a, a good weekend to do it. There's a lot of features in the bag. So there's a lot of parts and pieces. It's not one you're gonna knock out in an afternoon. So um, consider it a way to learn some new skills and nothing is hard in it. It's just a lot of different things, but it's a really fun bag to make and it's a great bag to carry. It's so comfortable and so versatile and I know you're gonna love it. So um, Sharon, I, we haven't really figured out how we're gonna do this. If you're gonna send us the fabric and we'll send it or we'll send you the stuff, um, you yeah. let us know. Yes, if you just send it to us and we will select the fabrics, we're gonna ship Bright Eyes uh, fabrics uh, with you know, with, with your gift to one lucky winner who Sarah Asby will be choosing after today's, um, you know, after we're done with today. So answer all of those questions and let us know what you think um, of which bag you'd like to make and, you know, which fabric collection you liked the most, or if you're gonna make multiple, we'd love to know that as well and which ones you, you enjoyed and which ones you saw. Um, there is a, another question. Um, well, it's related to me, Annie. So. Good. <laughs> um, I, I neglected to say what the quilt was behind me when I started earlier today. So the so we have uh, with tulip. This is tulip pink behind me. I'm sure many of you have recognized that. And uh, this is the curiouser and curiouser collection that is going to be shipping late April, early May to your local quilt shop. The name of this quilt is called the Hatter. We have a quilt that's called the Mad Hatter quilt kit which that will also be available to, buy, available to buy as a kit. But the one behind me will be on the Free Spirit website um, next month. It will come up and it's a download, you know, a pattern that you can download. This is made out of fat quarters, primarily from Curiouser and Curiouser. And the only yardage that you need to make it is the line work. So any of this line work that's in the quilt, We've got the white, we've got the stripe, and we've got, I don't know if you could see the dark on this or not, the way I have it, but any of that dark that's from uh, line work, that's where your yardage comes in, and that fabric already shipped to stores, so get your line work ready, get your curious and curiouser fat quarters, and you'll be able to make this kit, it's called the, I'm sorry, this, this quilt, and it's called the Hatter, and you will be able to get the pattern on the Free Spirit website, so please look there in the month of April when the fabric starts to ship. So um, I think that's it, Annie, um, on, on my side. Um, thank you so much. We, like I already said, we'd love to have you. We will probably ask you to be a guest again later this year. Um, you know, you are very, very inspirational to all of us always. And we love your enthusiasm. We love that you love free spirit. We love that you're an engineer. <laughs> you do it all. Thank you so much. And we love we love working with you and love being here. So yeah, please invite us back. And as we discussed, um, we're going to bring you and Nancy and whoever else wants to come on as guests on our weekly Facebook Live so we can pick your brain some too. So oh, lots okay. of information to share. Yes, well, thank you. We'll look forward to that as well. And actually, I have one more thing that I... So thank you to all of our guests. Thank you to Annie. We're very, very happy that you joined us this week. Keep sewing. We love that. And I just wanted to wish Nancy Jewell a happy birthday. Today is her birthday. So if you know Nancy Jewell, make sure you blow up her phone right now, wishing her a happy birthday. So anyways, thank you, Annie. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in a couple of weeks when we're back with Inspired by Free Spirit Fabrics. If you have any questions about Free Spirit Fabrics, please come to our website. And if you have any questions about today's presentation with By Annie, go to their website, byannie.com. Uh, so thank you, Annie. We'll Thanks talk again. Soon. Happy birthday, Nancy. Thanks I know. Again. Happy birthday, Nancy Jewel. She'll love me for that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.